Hello and welcome to AP Human Geography, Chapter 2, Key Issue 1, Where is the World's Population Distributed? So we're looking at where people are on the Earth. We've got major population clusters. There's four areas where you see tons of people. We've got East Asia, where you're looking at Japan and parts of China. We have South Asia, India, Europe, of course, and Southeast Asia, where you've got Indonesia. Other clusters where you find lots of people, populations concentrated, would be on the northeastern seaboard of the United States and Canada and the Atlantic coast of Africa. You're going to want to remember where these major clusters of populations are. Sparsely populated regions, where people don't live. Typically, people don't want to live in areas that are dry like a desert. They don't want to live in places that are wet like the marshlands down in Florida here, you just can't build a house there. You don't want to live in areas that are cold because you can't grow crops. And you, can't, you don't want to live in high lands like up on the mountaintops because it's too cold and it's rocky and it's difficult to grow anything. The ecumen is a portion of the Earth's surface occupied by human settlement. And you can see back here in AD year 1 that the ecumen was fairly large where people weren't living in the Amazon jungles, jungles or in sub-Saharan Africa. Um, excuse me, the ecumen, this is where they, they do live. So people are living in this lush land here along the coast of the Amazon jungles. Um, they're living in sub-Saharan Africa. They're not living in the deserts of Africa. And they're not living in Siberia area of what is now Russia because it's just too cold. You can't get things to grow. But they are living around the water where they can uh, irrigate their crops, where they can uh, move a little bit more freely because of the water and they can transport goods and connect with other cultures. Fast forward to the 1900s and you can see that the ecumen has greatly expanded due to technological advancements, due to population growing. People have just naturally needed to spread out so the ecumen is much larger, but you still don't see people living in the desert. You still don't see people living up here in the Arctic Circle of North America and of Asia. Population density. There's a few specific ways we look at that. One thing we measure is arithmetic density, which would be the total number of people divided by total land. All it is is how many people are living in an area. When we look at the Earth, we can see where we have major population clusters using arithmetic density. You can see that India, of course, is one of the most populated countries in the world, along with China. Lots of dense situations where people are packed in there. Another way we organize the data about population is through physiological density, which is the number of people supported by a unit area of land. And when we talk about physiological density, what we mean is with arable land, that's land that's suitable for farming. So it's important to look at it through physiological density because people are going to try to pack in wherever they can and some places, like the United States, have a lot of arable, a lot of farming land. So it's going to be more land to support more people. As opposed to, like Egypt, where it really only has arable land around the uh, Nile River, and, and it needs to support a whole mass population. So that uh, number is going to be a lot higher for a small amount of land. And then finally, we'll look at agricultural density which is the ratio of number of farmers to the amount of arable land. It's kind of the same situation with physiological density, where we're looking at the number of farmers and land that is suitable for farming, but it depends on your society. Like, for example, in the United States, our ratio of farmers is pretty low because nowadays it's very commercialized. So one professional farmer is feeding thousands of people, whereas in sub-Saharan Africa, perhaps, Everybody's a farmer because they don't have infrastructure. They don't have farming techniques. Uh, they don't have businesses and such as much as we do. So everybody's going to be growing their own crops. We look specifically at physiological density, which is the people supported by arable land. What we've got is the Nile River here in Egypt. It has to support on this one strip of land that's fertilized or, or irrigated by the Nile River. It has to support this dense population in Egypt. That's why the physiological density is so high. Same thing over here in Colombia. You've got dense jungle lands where you can't really farm. So the small amounts of land that they do have have to support a large population. 
agricultural density, which is the ratio of farmers per arable land. Again, everybody over here in India and China, they, not everybody, but large amounts of the po population are farmers. So the ratio is going to be more equal, like everybody's farmers, so everybody's working on that arable land. Uh, as opposed to Brazil, where most people are, are in a developed situation where they're working in cities, so you're going to have very few farmers. Same thing with the United States and places in Europe. So that's a look at key issue one.